Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you how to create seamless patterns in Photoshop. I'll give you some tips and tricks and some tools to get you to creating surface pattern designs. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Hey guys, for what I do specifically, I create tie dye seamless repeat patterns out of the Photoshop brushes that I sell on Creative Market. Just to give you an idea, this is my design, but if you were creating a new document, you would go to new. I actually like to create uh, 2500 by 2500 pixels at 72 dpi. You can literally make it whatever dimensions you want. Just make sure that it's a square. So whatever you have for the width must also be the same for the height. Once you're there, you're going to double click this layer just to unlock the background. And then from there, you would create new layers. And this is where you would add your design. So now let's say we have our design already ready to go. So you can see here that I've added all of the separate elements and pieces and the design into separate layers, just so that if I end up messing up, then I'll have these layers to refer back to. So once you have your design and you're happy with how your design looks, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do control click is we'll duplicate the group and then we're going to work off of that. So we'll turn off the bottom layer. What we'll do now is we'll highlight all of the layers, pressing shift and click to highlight all of them. And then we can do a right click or control click. We'll do merge layers. Okay, so the second thing we want to do, let's go ahead and add guidelines to this. I like to press Command T so I can see where the midpoint are, the vertical and horizontal. So what I'll do is I'll drag it from the rulers on the sides of the canvas. Make sure you press Command colon so that you can see the guides. For the actual vertical, you wanna drag it from the top ruler down to the mid. And then you also wanna make sure that snap is checked on and then snap to guides. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the marquee tool and what we'll do is we'll cut this right side of the document, press Command C to copy, and then Command X to cut. We'll go to Edit, Paste Special, Paste in Place. And then if you do Command colon, so you can see that there's no weird seams right here. That's why I do paste in place so that it pastes the actual artwork and lines it up to the artwork on the left. So now that we have that, what we'll do is we'll do Command T on the right side and then we'll hold down Shift. And then you see these guides here because we have the snap to actually turned on it should automatically just snap to the left side. We'll click on the bottom layer and then we'll press Command T and then we'll hold down Shift, drag it to the right. So now what happens when we do this is that our pattern will repeat from the right and the left side. So for example, to test this out, what you can do is go to Edit, Define Pattern and we'll go ahead and see how that looks. And so here I've created a separate document. I typically create 1920 by 1080 PX at 72 DPI just so that I can test out the pattern. And then once you're there, you can double click the layer to unlock it and then you can add a layer style. And in this case, we're gonna add pattern overlay and we're gonna take our very first pattern that we actually defined. And so I've got like these missing areas here that kind of need to be filled in. And so I do this in the beginning so that I can see what the pattern actually looks like. And so we'll go back to our original design document. Since we have some areas that we need to fill in, what I actually have now is I've filled in all of the different areas that I thought we're missing some pieces of the design. And the way that I did that, I'm just gonna walk you through this really quick. So here's the pattern that we divided. So from here, I actually added this shape here. Let me just turn these off. So I added this extra shape. And what I did was I went ahead and cut the shape in half so that I can place it at the top and bottom at opposite sides. So here's what I mean. So we'll go ahead and Command C to copy and then Command X to cut. And then what we'll do is we're gonna do edit, 
paste special in place because once we do that, it'll actually connect as if it was one piece, but they're actually now on separate layers. And so we wanna have the shape on two separate layers so that we can move it and that it repeats vertically. So I've actually added this shape to the bottom. Just to give you an idea, I'll go ahead and drag this bottom part. And so it should already snap to, but a good way to check that is to make sure there's no white space. So if you moved it down a little bit, you can see there's white space, but if you go ahead and um, snap it to the top, so I'm holding down shift and then I'm gonna click this bottom layer and then we're gonna hold it down. When you put it up against your design, you should see something like this. So now you could just fill in the areas where you can connect the design. And so I've actually done this already and so I'm gonna show you where I have filled in the design here, what I did for the top and the bottom here. So I've changed the opacity to 50% just so that we can get a variation in the shades and tones for the color. So I'm literally using two colors here, like a blue and a pink. At any time, you can always like, say for example, this shape, you can take it and bump down the opacity to about let's say 60%, just so that you get a variation. So I went ahead and filled in these other places, like noticing this top and then the half of it is right here on the bottom. I do that with the marquee tool and then cutting and pasting in place just so that we can see that it's aligned. So now I'm pretty happy with my design. What I like to do at this point is I like to duplicate the group. So I'll do Command J just so that I have the original and if I wanted to revert back to that, I could. So we'll go ahead and take these layers and we'll go ahead and merge the layers. At this point, what I like to do is blend the design together and I like to take a smudge tool and these are brushes from the Adobe website. If you click on get more more brushes it'll bring you to the Adobe landing page to get more brushes and these are Kyle's brushes and I like to use the wet blender uh, just so that I can mix some of the elements together and so that it doesn't look so flat I like to blend some of these areas just to get like a different variation make sure things look good so this is just like an extra thing I do at the very end just so that some of the white space doesn't look so dead and then once you're happy with this, what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna go to edit, define pattern, click okay. And then we can test it on this original document. It's a 1920 uh, PX by 1080 PX. So we'll double click it and then we'll go back to pattern overlay. We'll choose the pattern at the very bottom. That's the very last one. Actually really happy with how this turned out. You can also bump up the scale if you like. You want it to look a little bit bigger or smaller depending on what you're going for. And then you can also change the angle of the design. And then if you're happy with that, you can save this as a JPEG or wherever you wanna upload it online. Say if you had a print on demand shop on Redbubble, Society6, or even Spoonflower. All right guys, well thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, comment below this video. I'll link everything below this video. If you guys are interested in checking out some of my Photoshop brushes that I actually used in this video, I sell them on Creative Market and also on my Shopify store. And if you enjoy this video and wanna see more content like this, please hit the like button and go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.